Hi everyone, uh, it's been a while since I last posted a video, but just recently there's been a couple of interesting papers I'd like to bring to your attention in a couple of videos over the next few weeks. Now this video concerns a new paper published just a few days ago by um, Siraj and Loeb of Harvard University that suggests the dinosaurs were wiped out by a comet, not an asteroid as popularly thought. And this work has splashed across many major media outlets, uh, as you can see from this quick Google search. So my question is, what is new about this idea? You see, the thing is, uh, many people have suggested this before, that a comet wiped out the dinosaurs. So what is new about Siraj and Loeb's new work? Well, let's find out. Well, first it's worth mentioning that this is the same Professor Loeb who controversially claimed the Oumuamua object, detected a few years ago, thought by many to simply be an unusual kind of comet, was actually some advanced alien technology, an alien spacecraft essentially. So Professor Loeb is, is not new to the limelight. His alien idea has been a hot topic for some time. In fact, here he is uh, talking with new scientist um, while promoting his new book. And Oumuamua, by the way, is the first object we've detected that has an orbit that shows it must have come from another solar system. All the other asteroids and comets we've detected seem to have originated in our own solar system. So, yeah, it's a very interesting topic for sure. But, but now in his new paper with Siraj, he's suggesting the dinosaur killing object could have been a comet, not an asteroid. So what's new about this idea and is it good science? Well, we all know about the dinosaur killing impact, the Chicxulub impact that occurred about 66 million years ago near the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico. And we found the crater and a layer of iridium dust that settled around the globe, confirming this impact was caused by a large object, maybe as much as 10 kilometers in diameter. So this is a much larger object than the one claimed to have caused the much more recent Younger Dryas impact, for instance. That's linked with Gebekli Tepe, the origin of civilization in the Fertile Crescent, uh, the end of the Clovis culture in the US, and a spate of megafaunal extinctions. Indeed, I'll have more to say about that impact in my next video. And if you've never heard of the Younger Dryas impact, you should watch um, other videos on my channel. Anyway, back to Siraj and Loeb's work. What they are suggesting, essentially, is that a comet from the Oort cloud, so that's this spherical cloud of comets beyond the edge of our solar system, um, could have, for whatever reason, been nudged towards the sun. And then if it interacted in an, in an unlikely way with Jupiter, uh, the comet could have been nudged into a sun grazing orbit and whereupon it would have then disrupted and split apart uh, by the sun's gravity and, and then the large fragments uh, resulting from the splitting event, well, they might have collided with Earth. So the key thing they are saying is that a long period comet that's one with an orbit more than 200 years, could have caused the Chicxulub impact 66 million years ago. Now, as I said, this is not a new idea. Their contribution is to suggest the comet could have been tidally disrupted by the sun. And according to them, this makes it about 10 times more likely than previously thought that a comet fragment large enough to have caused the Chicxulub crater would encounter Earth. So their novel idea is really that the probability we would collide with a long period comet is higher than previously thought, if you take into account tidal disruption by the Sun. Moreover, they claim this makes the comet scenario uh, as likely as the asteroid scenario. So this is the usual scenario where it's assumed the object that caused the Chicxulub impact uh, came from the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter, around here in this gap. So their idea was a way of increasing the likelihood the dinosaur killer was a comet, not an asteroid. 
Now, it's a nice idea. It makes some sense. Um, I have no idea whether their calculations are correct, though. They're, they're quite complicated, and only an expert in analytic orbital mechanics would be able to assess that. But seeing as their paper has been through peer review, probably their claim that tidal disruption by the sun increases the chance of collision uh, of a large fragment with Earth is correct. I have no problem with that. However, there is a major flaw in their work. And that is that there is another route through which comets and their fragments can collide with Earth. Uh, and this one is thought to be much more likely, but they don't mention it at all in their paper, which is odd. And that's the problem with their work. So this other route is this. Comets from the scattered disk, so that's this circular region in the plane of the solar system, out here, closer to the solar system than the Oort cloud, well, comets from this region can first enter the outer solar system. So that's this region where we find the gas giant planets, Jupiter to Neptune. And, and when they adopt orbits in this region of the solar system, we call them centaurs. Now that's just a name for the population of comets in this region of the solar system. So now we have detected thousands of comets or centaurs in this region so we know this happens frequently however centaur orbits in this region are unstable they have roughly um, a lifetime of about one to ten million years because it's likely they will interact with one or more of these large planets this means that either they'll be flung back into the outer reaches of the solar system or uh, if we're unlucky, they can interact in an unlikely way with Jupiter and become trapped within the inner solar system. So once they do that, they are known as short period comets or Jupiter family comets. So now we have these short period comets and they just go round and round, completing many, many orbits in near Earth space. And because they are warmed by the sun when in the inner solar system, they gradually decay, and that means there's the potential for a comet fragment uh, colliding with Earth. Now, when comets are in these near-Earth orbits, they can either decay completely, or once again, they can be flung back out to the outer solar system and beyond. And in fact, they can do this many times. They can go back and forth between the outer solar system and the inner solar system many times. Anyway, the point is that this is thought by comet scientists to be a much more likely scenario than the one suggested by Siraj and Loeb. If the Chicxulub impact was caused by a comet, it's much more likely it had already been orbiting in the inner solar system for many thousands of years while gradually breaking up than it is to have directly come from the Oort cloud. And we know this because this scenario, the breakup of comets in short period orbits near Earth, has been researched for decades. In fact, for over 40 years. So there's an extensive body of work going back to 1979 uh, by British scientists, notably Bill Napier and Victor Klub and their colleagues. Uh, and you can find their work easily you can go using uh, Google Scholar. Uh, and their work is known popularly by the term of coherent catastrophism. So they've written dozens of papers about this. In fact, their careers are practically defined by this theory. And more recently, research from other comet scientists based on modern surveys of the sky shows that their early view is essentially correct. In fact, when they started out on this path, Klub and Napier considered the possibility of impacts with long period comets, but soon realized when the centaur population of comets was discovered that collision with short period comets was a much more likely process. And I recommend you to read this paper uh, from 2015 by Bill Napier on giant comets and mass extinctions. So the question that really concerns me is not whether Siraj and Loeb are correct or not. It's really about why they didn't mention this other process, the short period comet route, at all. Well, to answer this, I actually contacted Professor Loeb uh, to see what his view on this is. And he was gracious enough to respond several times to my emails. And 
essentially, if I condense it all down, it seems there are two reasons they didn't mention short period comets at all. First, his view is that the short period route is not that significant. He's aware of the process, of course, but his reading of the literature is that it is less important than for asteroids. And second, in their paper, they were focused only on explicit claims and calculations that have been published about the Chicxulub impact object. Uh, and as far as he's aware, there have been no specific predictions based on short period comets. So the main claim is that it was caused by an asteroid. Well, in my view, that is a weak position on both counts. So all the evidence is, even in the absence of fragmentation events, which would tend to increase the threat from comets, all the evidence is that short period comets are a much greater threat than long period comets. In fact, Professor Loeb pointed me to a paper suggesting that we can expect only, like this paper, suggesting that we can expect only one impact per 1.2 billion years from these centaurs, which then go on to be short period comets. But it turns out the abstract of this paper is misleading. The statistics they use in the abstract only count the observed centaurs, the ones that we've actually spotted so far. The problem is that centaurs are very hard to spot because they are so small, dark and far away. There are actually many more of them that we have not yet spotted. So the figures in the abstract on the order of one impact per billion years are a significant underestimate. In fact, using the latest data in this paper, based on a recent survey of centaurs, shows that the paper that Professor Loeb pointed me to underestimates the number of large centaurs, that's ones larger than say 10 kilometers, the ones that uh, Siraj and Loeb are interested in, it underestimates their number by about a factor of 100. So the true impact rate for comets larger than 10 kilometers, large enough to be the Chicxulub impactor, is likely to be about one impact every 20 million years or thereabouts. And this estimate takes no account of fragmentation, which will increase the impact rate further. And that means that short period comets are much more dangerous than asteroids or long period comets by a factor of probably much more than 10. And I recommend that you read this paper to see this very latest data. So I think Professor Loeb's position is an incorrect reading of the literature on this point. In fact, I questioned him about this and he said, using estimates of the true centaur population based on a small population of observed objects is dangerous. Now, to my mind, it's not dangerous at all. It's just good science. In fact, I would say it's ridiculous and poor science to use only the known population when estimates of the true population have consistently over the last 20 years or so, so this is just the latest paper in a series, have consistently suggested the true population of centaurs is several orders of magnitude larger than the known population. And these estimates are bounded by uncertainty ranges or error bars, which demonstrate that the currently known population is just a tiny fraction of the true population. And this is good science. So I think Professor Loeb is simply ignoring evidence that doesn't suit his position. As for his second point, that they only cited work that made specific predictions for the Chicxulub impact, again, I think this is a weak position. I think their paper would have been much improved by giving a more balanced account of the context of impacts on Earth. For example, although they don't make specific claims about this Chicxulub impact, it only took me a few hours to find data in these papers that can be used to estimate the impact rate for Chicxulub sized comets in short period orbits. So the data exists if you want to use it. Instead, they focused on one specific claim in one paper about an asteroid source for the Chicxulub impactor. And I think they should have done more than this. Now you might be inclined to be cynical and say they deliberately didn't mention any work on short period comets because it would highlight the weakness of their result. Well, I don't know about that, but I think it's clear 
the result of Siraj and Loeb is not that relevant to the impact hazard on Earth. They might be right that long period comets are a comparable threat to asteroids for Chicxulub sized impacts, but it's also clear based on the latest sky surveys, like this one, that this impact rate is actually dominated by short period comets. Actually, this isn't the first time that Professor Loeb has been a little bit economical uh, with the scientific literature, let's say. So there is an article here on the Cosmic Tusk about uh, a review paper that he wrote about the origins of astrobiology, that the, the discipline of astrobiology. And that's not my bag, um, but you can see uh, through this link that uh, the people on this website, Cosmic Tusk, are somewhat annoyed about that. And next to that article is another one uh, actually by me about some recent Younger Dryas uh, research. And by the way, you won't find this view elsewhere, I don't expect. The news media seem to have focused on the asteroid versus comet controversy rather than the long period versus short period comet issue. Uh, that's just a historical bias because asteroids have been more intensely studied than comets by scientists. So there are many more asteroid specialists than comet specialists. It actually has got nothing to do with the likelihood of impacts by either type of object. Well, there you go. Next video in a few weeks. Take care.